Hello and welcome to the Monday, December 19th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend we had a diary by Guy about a malicious email impersonating HSBC. The email, oddly enough, used an authentic HSBC phone number, but it was a phone number in Luxembourg. Now, Guy is in Canada. Doubt that was used sort of to target a particular geography. Maybe that they try to use a legitimate phone number, but one that people are unlikely going to call. But the goal here is not to trick users into logging into a phishing website. Instead, the user is supposed to open the enclosed attachment, which then of course turns into malware as a Guy find out an info stealer. So that's probably how your credentials are going to get lost, not via phishing. Uh, Guy is demonstrating a quick walkthrough in how to decode and quickly analyze the file with CyberChef. It's one of those, well, arrives as a zip file, when you unpack uh, it, it then becomes sort of one file with double extensions in order to confuse the user and maybe some automated tools a little bit about what the type of the file is. And we got more end-to-end -end encryption news from cloud services. Uh, Google now announced that it will keep email bodies and attachments encrypted in its server for now, the feature will be enabled in beta versions for Google Workspace customers. So that's when you actually uh, pay for a Gmail. Not sure if this will eventually trickle down to sort of the free accounts, but of course it may also hurt uh, somewhat of the target advertisement and such that uh, Google typically uses to monetize uh, the free Gmail accounts. If your account is eligible, so you have basically the right type of account, then the administrator uh, can request access before January 20th. And again, that's at this point a beta feature. So we'll see how long it'll take for this to actually become a full feature. Other Google Cloud services like Google Docs and Google Drive, I believe uh, of the calendar and such already have the ability to enable client-side encryption. Well, and uh, not to sort of uh, take away too much from these efforts uh, to uh, get sort of good end-to-end uh, -end encryption going, in particular for cloud services, in particular with web-based tools, you always have to be a little bit uh, careful about your threat models here. What are you protecting yourself from? Uh, you are still, whenever you're vi visiting the website, importing whatever JavaScript is needed to decrypt the data, which of course, well, comes from Google or it better comes from Google. And then, uh, well, Google also released a new open source vulnerability scanner. And now it's an open source vulnerability scanner, not just because it's uh, open source, but actually the point of the scanner is to scan open source projects that you may be using for vulnerabilities. About a year ago, Google started a database of uh, all the different libraries, packages in the open source uh, ecosystem that have vulnerabilities. So what this vulnerability scanner does is it uh, uses that library to check if uh, anything on your system actually uses uh, one of these vulnerable uh, packages. Once it finds uh, vulnerable packages, it then can create a software bill of materials in a couple different formats uh, to list uh, these vulnerable packages to make remediation easier. These last couple of years, of course, there has been a big emphasis on not using components with known vulnerabilities and in general kind of know uh, what you're using. So um, looks like this may be a good sort of piece of the puzzle here to figure out uh, what you're using and if any of these libraries have any vulnerabilities. And talking about uh, open source components uh, with vulnerabilities, the Samba project uh, patched uh, four flaws that are all rated as high. Samba, of course, being the open source implementation of the SMB, the file sharing uh, protocols. The common threat here of these vulnerabilities is that it fixes the use or basically removes the use of the RC4 algorithm in Kerberos. RC4, of course, has uh, been shown to be weak for a uh, while now. Uh, so no big surprise here that it's being eliminated in particular in something like uh, Kerberos, of course, that's uh, sensitive for authentication. 
And then we also got an update from Sec Consult regarding a buffer overflow that they disclosed in February. Later, Rapid7 actually disclosed a similar, even more severe buffer overflow that all affects Cycel routers. Apparently, uh, there are still uh, plenty of uh, these uh, routers out there that haven't been patched yet. One problem here may be that some of these uh, routers are controlled by ISP, so something uh, to double check here. Well, and that's it for today. Just a little update on our holiday schedule here. I'll uh, do this podcast uh, regularly, so you'll have uh, five times uh, this week. However, next week I will not do any podcasts uh, because of the Christmas and New Year's uh, holidays. Well, if you like the podcast, as usual, uh, tell your friends about it. I'm doing them uh, because uh, people listen to them. So um, help me get the word out. And thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.